general birthdays, uh, even as we get older, you know, we'd like to know, well, well, well how old are you? Right. <laughs> you know? so, so a question to hold for Sagadao is, uh, how, how old is the Buddha, right? How old is the Buddha? <clears throat> so in our tradition, in this um, center, we, we practice uh, from different perspectives, right? So um, depending upon uh, what uh, meditation or what school uh, you're practicing or um, style, um, you might have a different um, answer because so we have... Uh, you know, depending upon um, human beings, uh, you know, sometimes how old do we go? <laughs> or, um, you know, we get older, we might say, uh, old enough. <laughs> you know, it's like, or, you know, which way one? Wait, wait, you can buy, yeah, uh, something. So, um, a little different style. So I'm going to uh, put it out to you to see which which answer you like. Um, so, from one perspective, we could say Buddha's like, what, 26, 27 hundred years old, right? Hmm. Or we might say, uh, from another perspective, we could say uh, Buddha a timeless. Hmm. Maybe uh, we could even say like, Buddha is evolving, right? Constantly evolving. Um, and maybe a little bit more contemporary. Um, uh, the, uh, the Buddha is now, right? <laughs> Eckhart totally didn't invent that. No, it's okay. We've lost this. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. However, in the Vajrayana tradition, tantric style, uh, we have um, uh, also uh, something very interesting, that Buddha is as old as I am. So when we did the praise, the first, one of the first stanzas uh, addressed this, said, when you chief of humans were born, you took seven steps on this great earth, and you said, I am supreme in this world. Uh, and at that time, the uh, the gods, uh, one, one had hot water and one had cool water come down and bathe. So that's why we do baby Buddha. And the statue is like, the baby Buddha is like, <laughs> like above and below, only me. That seems very strange, right? From uh, maybe... Why, why would the Buddha be so arrogant, you know, say, only I, you know? <clears throat> it's usually we think, well, Buddha means no self or, you know, something like that, or humble self. But uh, in Tantrikas, uh, we learn how to say uh, the Buddha is uh, as old as I am. So this takes a special kind of consciousness, a special kind of practice, because normally, of course, our identity is on um, our our fixed personal idea, our driver license self, right? And then we think, well, we'll shift it to maybe a a non-identity. We'll say, I'm the wind in the forest, and I'm the elements. <clears throat> or maybe we call our identity inter interbeing, like that. But from Vajrayana point of view, uh, at some point, um, we're able to have an identity that uh, claims the territory, so to speak, that is, isn't is based on uh, either our personal narrative, you know, our, our history, our driver's license, or on uh, an emptiness narrative or on a universal narrative. It's right in the middle. This is the self of the middle way. So when we say it's, I'm as old as the Buddha, that I is not the I that's either the Buddha nature I or the personal self driver's license. It's the one in the middle. 
this is the eye that understands the how to unify um, both the absolute and the relative world. And that's uh, what we're doing in Tantra. Tantra means to weave things together to unify them. So uh, in Vajrayana, that's why we have these dramatic uh, flags out, uh, or flagpoles, or stupas, or even tankas, where we're saying, uh, here I am. But that I, that identity, is not based on the subject-object identity or on the uh, just an emptiness identity. It's the uh, in the middle. It's the unification of those two. This is very difficult to realize because we tend to either go, I want to just be me, kind of Frank Sinatra style, or we want to be selfless, you know, and we'll just be St. Francis or something. Uh, but uh, our job is to uh, take uh, seven steps uh, north, south, east, west, up, down, and say, I alone am supreme in this world, right? So uh, that, but that I is not the egocentric I. That's the I that's able to fully um, uh, feel its place, the full balance like that. So that's the I that's able to kind of speak uh, for, without support. We'd say in the Diamond Sutra, you want to bring forth a thought that is unsupported. Usually we talk about support all the time, right? Like we want support. But here, in this case, it's an identity that is not uh, based on something underneath it. Because usually the idea is that there's one reality and then there's some other reality underneath it, right? That's conventional philosophy and religion. There's some substance that supports underneath. But in our tradition, uh, appearance and emptiness are unified there's nothing behind it. It's very strange. Right now we think, well, there must be something behind all this. You know, there's got to be somebody watching behind our eyes. <laughs> so it feel that way, you know, like that. But when we say the unsupported I, that the true supreme uh, identity is uh it's all completely here right now. It's all transparent right now. But to realize this takes does take practice. And we do have to sometimes practice from the standpoint of Buddha is timeless, or Buddha is 2,600 years ago, or Buddha is now, so that we can finally say, uh, just I alone, right? So that's why the name for the temple is like the lion's roar, right? To make the lion's roar, we're able to to uh, say, I, I'm going to uh, be able to make a statement, make a sound, make an identity that is not based on either personal self or absolute self. It's not based on either human beings or gods. So it just, it is based on itself, right? It's, it's kind of odd, right? So we say that it is just based on itself. That is the true interdependence. It just completely stands alone. So that's hard to understand because when we understand interdependence, we always think, well, there's got to be this and that, and then the this and that means it's interdependence. But actually, um, interdependence, when experienced, uh, feels like you're standing alone. It's very odd. And that standing alone experience then feels like a completely spherical. So even though you're standing alone, you don't feel lonely, but you're definitely standing alone. No one else can have our own private experience. Do you think it can? I don't think so. Even though we're completely interconnected, we each have our own private experience. It's really weird. So once we realize completely our interdependence from the tantric point of view, then we can realize our complete liberation that each of us has our own, you know, we we are our own snowflake, okay? So each of us really is very unique, you see. So in our tradition, particularly at Lions Road, I want to bring out people's uniqueness. That's why we have so many programs. That's why we have uh, everyone here is quite um, um, unique. Um, 
So that that is that uh, I'm supreme in this world. I'm willing to just say, okay, I'll 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 stand <laughs> by. So uh, I'd like to tell the story, and then we'll go out and do the bathing. Um, uh, so many years ago, um, uh, I don't know how this came about, but uh, my psychiatrist friend, Cliff Straley, said, oh, you know, I, I understand you want to teach at Sac State, teach group therapy. Why don't you come to this group? So I came, and uh, uh, he was out in Fair Oaks at the time, and it's kind of odd, like, Cliff, you didn't tell me it was an all-female group. What are you doing? You're putting an all-female group. But that's the truth. That was what was going on. So it was a self-esteem group or something. You know this story. So self-esteem groups at that time, this is like 25 years ago. So you say, my self-esteem is a three because of blah, blah, blah. Or my self-esteem is like an eight because I, you know, da, 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 right? You'd give the evidence. That makes sense, right? So, you know, people go, went around. I've told this story before, right? No, okay. So, go around and people go, I'm, I'm a two. I, I, I feel like I've been beating up on myself a lot, so I'm a two. Or, you know, I've really given myself a lot of affirmations. You know, so I'm a nine or something. But I came to the last, uh, the last person, the last one, and she said, my self-esteem is a 10. <laughs> so, uh, how, how, you know, are you wondering, how, how did she know the self-esteem was a 10? So Erwin looked and then said, how do you know it's a 10? You should know the answer, right? I've already given you the answer in the past. What did she say? Because they say so. Yeah. Because they say so. That's it. They say, that's it. It's a, it's a, it's a self you know, it's like a self-performative utterance, you know? Oh, you can know what your self-esteem is, right? So if you say it's a 10, it's a 10. It's with that confidence, you see, understanding like that. You don't have to like, you don't have to, there is the router word where you're checking, yeah, my self-esteem is a six because people are nice to me and I'm nice to myself or something. But actually, it all comes down to like, well, because I say so. It's like that. That's not, it, not close. it's not exactly what, you know, but it's very close like that. It's so we we can't just say uh, everything because just I say so. But the, but the, that is like that unsupported, it's the unsupported expression, you see. That is the true interdependence. It's very interesting. So interdependence sometimes is because of these causes and conditions. But the uh, Vajrayana interdependence is in some way just because I say so. Mm. So uh, when we do the baby Buddha, um, we're enacting a ritual that we should be doing for ourselves, right? So um, some things are, you know, just because we say so. Isn't that true? <laughs> And somebody says, well, at least, you know, somebody says, how do you feel? And you go, I don't feel that good. Are they going to say, no, you do? <laughs> well, somebody used to say that to me. You know. My mother used to say, I'll tell you, how do you, she asked me, how do you feel? I say, I'd say, I don't feel like going to school. And she goes, yes, you do. So, <laughs> but now, so we're going outside, we're, we're doing a ritual where you just bathe the Buddha and then walk around and, uh, what mantra did we do last year? So, oh, that's good. So the mantra is just sing the compassion mantra. Om Mani Padme Hum. Om Mani Padme Hum. Om Mani Padme Hum. Om Mani Padme Hum. Okay, you got it. So, <laughs> so like, um, the ritual like is for kids, but it's also for us. So you you feel that just kind of like uh, unsupported, supported thought that can just arise, right? Doesn't have to reference anything else. Isn't that wonderful? So Dharma really that sometimes we forget is 
uh, really about liberation. It is about peace, but it's the peace of complete liberation. Com there's no, there's no like somebody on top of us, right? There's no someone pushing us from behind, and there's no someone pulling us, right? It's very when you do your meditations and you feel like, oh, this, this is weird. My breath is not pulling me, and it's not pushing me. It's very interesting. It's unsupported. You see, that's when we say unsupported. We don't mean disconnected. It's like it's not. You're not being pulled, and you're not being pushed. So, you experience both hot and cold. So when you, or you think you're the uh, the Buddha is getting a shower of both hot and cold, and in the middle, right? Okay. So who's in charge from now on? Autumn. Autumn. Where'd she go? She went outside. So uh, we should go out now. Do you think? Yeah, I think that'd be great. So I'll surprise her. <laughs> Everyone thinks I'm always in charge. I know. I'm just like I don't know what's happening now, but. Uh, so after, we'll we'll do that, and then after that we have we have some uh, lunch or something. Yeah, there's a lot of food in there. Please stay for lunch. Yeah. Okay. And then this afternoon we're still doing Kala Chakra. Doing Kala Chakra, and then anyone who wants to help do some last minute uh, preparations for Ling Rinpoche should stick around after that. Yes. Okay. So maybe uh, maybe we should end with dedication right now. Okay. Yeah. So if you don't want to bathe the baby, but he can leave after this. That's <laughs> I don't want to do that. Yeah, let's go. So these virtuous actions may quickly seem state of a guru Buddha and human beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel, bodhicitta, live not, reason, arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish, but increase more and more. We are encircled by snow mountains. You are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful, Chengizhi, Tenzin Jatsu, please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish, and the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all my goals achieve happiness, and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Well song, magical display, the deep awareness of all the victorious ones, most forgiver, a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate my goers, please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshvara, great treasure of Aprikur's compassion, Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom, Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Mars, Songkapa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages, Rosan Japa, I make requests at your holy feet. Omo Araya Pazayana Indi Om Araya Pazana Indi Omo